In this video, we will be discussing about how to practice Perl programming. So, Perl programming, we can either use Notepad as a simple editor and use command prompt for execution of the Perl programming. Or else, we can also use a known editor called Discovery Studio Visualizer. In Discovery Studio Visualizer, you can if you click File, New, you can find a script window. Inside the script window, you can type the Perl script. I have gone to the new script and now in this new script window, I am going to type the Perl program. If I type the Perl program here, in the bottom, you can find an output to find an output. If you want to feed any argument, you can feed arguments here. Okay. Now, let me uh, take you to uh, practice with a simple program. For a simple program, I am going to illustrate with how to output a, a, a string. Okay. So, now I am going to type like, hello, welcome to bioinformatics world. So, this is my string and a small program in Perl program. For outputting a statement, we have to use print function. And inside the double quotes, you have to enclose a string and you have to terminate with the terminator operator. So, this is a simple program for uh, Perl programming. Now, I am simply going to run the script by clicking this icon. Now, we can find an output for this. Okay. So, however, we have seen uh, this simple output. Now, I am going to illustrate uh, you with uh, the operators, whatever we have discussed in the previous session. If you see the previous session, we have discussed about eight types of operators, isn't it? Now, we can see how to use the arithmetic operators uh, and assignment operators. So, if you want to use the operators, you should know how to use the data type. The first data type I am going to illustrate you is the scalar variable. For the scalar variable, okay, I am going to use uh, an assignment operator like this. That is dollar i plus equals to. So, what I mean by this? Practically, we mean that dollar i equals dollar i plus 2. This is the meaning for that. That is dollar i equals dollar i plus 2. Either you can give statement like this if you want to increment a value or you can give like this. Okay, you got it. And if you have already initialized a dollar i, you can able to uh, find a value for this. Now, I just given a statement like dollar i plus equals to Okay, and I am going to initialize here the previous statement like dollar i is nothing but 0. Okay, now I am going to print that value that is what is dollar i. Okay, and terminating this terminator operator. So, these are the three lines of my code. To execute this, you have to click. This. See, you got an output like true. Got it. So, plus equals here, uh, we mean that this is an assignment operator, not an arithmetic operator. If you use dollar i equals dollar i plus 2, then that is an arithmetic. But if I use dollar i plus equals 2, this is now considered as assignment operator. Okay. So, now we ca came to know how to use even uh, the scalar variable, especially how to use the integer variable declared in scalar and how to uh, assign and how to output the statement. Now, let me take you to the next example that is using arrays. How to write a program using arrays? Okay. So, for this, I am going to take an example like uh, uh, this example that is printing days of the week. Okay. So, printing days of the week this is an example I am going to explain you. So, for this, I just type the code exactly however it is typed there. Hash. Okay. Uh, you are going to use exclamatory slash qsr slash bin slash perl hyphen double. Do you know the meaning of this line? So, in perl program, when you give hash followed by any string, so all these things are considered as a comment here. You know, the perl program, that is perl interpreter is already inbuilt in Discovery Studio Visualizer. So, there is no need to give this statement. You know what is the significance of this statement? If you are installing the Perl in Linux operating system, you must include 
a full package to use for functions like print and any other thing. Even if you want to go use output or input function, you have to use this package. That is, in USR folder of pin in Linux, you can Perl, uh, find Perl is installed in the folder. And hyphen W signifies that whatever functions present in the Perl package, if you want to use everything, that is, hyphen W is with all the functions. If you want to use all the functions, you have to use hyphen W. But in our case, we are not using a Linux operating system. We are using a Windows operating system and the two, the packages are inbuilt. So, there is no need to include any packages to execute even uh, print functions. Got it? And now, I am going to illustrate you how to initialize an array. For initializing an array, I am going to use an uh, operator called add. Okay, add state equal. Now I'm going to give an operator called quote with. Inside the quote with, okay, I'm, I'm first I'm going to open the slash. What slash I have to open? This slash. And then I have to give the days of the week. I start with Monday. Okay, uh, give a space and then go for Tuesday. Give a space, Wednesday, Thursday, space, FRI, space. Saturday, space, Sunday. So, these are my, the list of scalars, I am enclosing it in code with operator. So, you can also see the, if I enclose it uh, with a slash, you can find in pink color. If not, it is in black color. So, you can able to find this in editor for a pearl. It is easier for you. You can find your error before on warnings before executing your program. So, Better use this kind of a software. Okay, now I am going to use semicolon as a terminator operator for this second line. Now, uh, typing kind of to go to the third line. Now, if I want to type specifically, okay, like dollar days, inside the days I am going to give a uh, bracket, okay, square bracket I am going to give like zero. Okay, now. I am going to give something random like we can check what exactly we can get. If I give like a dollar days of 2, what we can get? And if I type like days of 6, what you can get? Or even 7, I can type instead of 6, I can go for 7. And instead of uh, 7, now I am going to give another scalar value like minus 1. Can you guess what kind of an output I can expect if I can execute this code? So, it is, so this code is uh, basically an illustration for uh, arrays function. Here I am enclosing an, uh, uh, first initializing an array variable like days and enclosing a list of scalars of the day of the week using a code with operator. Okay. And now I am going to output three different uh, scalar variables. I, uh, if you see the arrays, the arrays are all, always store the scalar from 0th position. That is, arrays are generally a list of scalars and arrays store the scalars from 0th position. So, if you see in 0th position, you can find MON. And if you want to see in 2nd position, it is WED. Then what is in 7th position? So, count like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Only we have 6. Then what is 7? The 7, you get a repetitive one. You get a repetitive, like uh, after Sunday, what you will be getting? Monday, isn't it? So, the Monday is in the, the 7th position. Here, I uh, can find in the 4th, you have to type like minus 1. If you type minus 1 in the scalar, okay, what exactly you can get? Before, if Monday is 0, before Monday, what you will be getting? Sunday. So, if you type like this, you get like Sunday. Okay. So, now can we execute this code and we can check whatever uh, we discussed, whether you are getting an output or not. I select the entire code and click run. So, Monday, Wednesday, Sunday. Okay. So, this kind of an output we got for this. Okay. Uh, I think uh, one is missing here. So, this is missing. So, again, I am going to execute an output. Monday, Wednesday. I think one is, we are not getting one. Monday, Wednesday, we are getting seven. 
the seventh position we are not taking because seven is not present here but you know if you execute it in using notepad definitely you get it can get an output but here in the Perl scripts you have some kind of a problem you are getting one d for this three statement you are not getting for this okay but if you execute it uh, if you type it in notepad and work in active state Perl or strawberry Perl, even you can get an output for the previous statement okay now i have completed illustration of for array now let me take you to the next data type that is hash how to use the hash data type. okay for this i am going to illustrate using uh, program using this slide okay so that is program 2 i am going to take you to the program 2 so here for the hashes i am going to uh, declare the hash okay i have to declare the hash only using the percentage sign so percentage data now the data is your hash variable so if you want to uh, initialize the hash variable you should have a key pointing with the value one now i give like uh, a, a key value as ram kumar okay as a string like ram kumar and i'm going to use uh equals where is equals here the equals you can find here and i'm going to give greater okay i'm going to give like uh, a value that is an h value think like this an h value for ram kumar now i use a separator operator called comma after you say comma i go to the next uh, string that is ravi krishna and another name and now i'm going to give an again a pointer or arrow variable i'm going to give his uh, h value now i'm going for the third scalar that is third key value so here what kind of a difference you can find in ram kumar you are using a single quotes uh single quotes open single quotes close but here single quotes close single quotes open okay now i'm going to give a third one okay uh sangeeta close the single quotes use the equals operator followed by creator i'm going to give a value for this now i terminate with the terminator operator okay so either give single quotes or a double quotes okay here myself i have given this uh, I think they're better you can go for double quotes there won't be any problem for you let me check the kind of output that is on here okay now i initialize the hash variable called data now, if I want to output only the name, so you are going to receive all the name in array variable called name. How to receive all the things? For this, you have to use a keyword called keys. So, you have to use keys followed by space percentage data. So, give like keys percentage data, you can you receive only the scalar okay i mean you receive only the keys key value inside the array now this is okay now let me type the first one that is print dollar name of zero let us see what you'll be getting i have completed the code selected everything going to run yeah you got it ravi krishna actually if you type these names, okay, so here you are getting Ravi Krishna, isn't it? Instead of Ram Kumar. Now I am going to execute. Not only zero, but also one and two. Now see an output. You got all the things. Sangeeta is stored in zeroth position. Ram Kumar in the first position. And Ravi Krishna in the second position. It means that you are storing all the keys in an array called name but these are not indexed exactly from 0th position 
whatever you store the scalars, these scalars are stored in random. Now, initially, you got uh, when I executed initially names of zero, you got Ravi Krishna. But second time, when I typed the names of zero, okay, what you got? You got as Sangeeta. One day after Sangeeta, you got like Ram Kumar, which is initially is in first position. Then Ravi Krishna is in second position. See, so you can able to find the list of scalars, whatever is stored or not according to the arrays, like you start from zero, but uh, these values are stored in random. Similarly, however, I illustrated you about uh, the usage of keys, keyword. Now we can see how to output the values that are ages here in this case. Okay, so for this, I'm going to use an array called ages. Instead of keys, you have to use a keyword called values and give the hash data type like percentage of data. Now, uh, you have to type all the ages, isn't it? I copy the entire code and paste it. Instead of name, I am going to give like ages. Ages of 0, ages of 1, and ages of 2. Okay. Now, I am going to select the entire code and try to execute it. Now, we got like not only got like Ravi Krishna, Ram Kumar, Sangeeta, also the three ages are displayed. But these ages, okay, are not uh, the names and ages are no, unclear, they are just because everything typed in a single line. So, I suggest you to use a new line space for each and every output state, okay. So, for this, I am going to use a new line escape sequence that is slash n in each and every statement, okay. Now, after this, simply select the entire code, execute. Okay, we have some problem. The problem is, here we are using a variable output, but you are printing even the escape sequence. So, one must de definitely enclose the entire scalar variable in double quotes. That's most important. So, or else, you can find this kind of black backslash error. Okay. Now I type the entire. I am typing the entire code variable name followed by escape sequences inside the double quotes. If you want to even output a statement followed by a variable, better use double quotes. Give a statement and then you can give your value. Okay. Now our program is perfect. Error free. Execute it. Find the output. Ravi Krishna, Ram Kumar, Sangeeta, and even the ages are not in sequence. These are also in random 32, 34, 33. But Ravi Krishna age is 32. It's not changed. Ram Kumar age is 34. Even this is not changed. You got it? The key always point with value. That is, key one is pointing with value one, and key two is pointing with value two. In our case, Ravi Krishna is the key to, uh, key two, pointing with value two, and Ram Kumar key one is pointing with value one, and uh, key three, that is Sangeeta, is pointing the thirty three value three. Okay, so this is a simple illustration of how to use hashes. I hope you understand well. So thank you.